so it was always very annoying but then all the same we are here we are happy they, this is summer <laughs> we are happy we love summer that's why we are going to these streets every time because we don't have summer every time the weather is now good you see hey guys welcome back to the channel i hope you're doing great <laughs> so basically in today's video i'm going to be answering um you know it was a video suggestion on the channel that's what i'm going to be doing so panel ask on the channel how did you deal with loneliness and boredom especially during covid period and as a newcomer in the uk so that's basically what this video is going to be about i'm going to be answering that question if you're new here my name is couscous welcome to the channel do well to subscribe do well to join the family before you go and also watch other videos that you haven't watched if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back thank you so much for always supporting you see this is a video request i am honoring like i always do so if you have any questions any video requests do well to drop it and i will be glad to do that just for you to answer your question so let's get right into the video so i'm going to quickly answer this question based on my experience i left nigeria in september last year 2020 and i traveled alone I, I was basically alone. I did everything alone. I traveled to UK alone for the very first time. I came to a student accommodation because I already booked my student accommodation. But um, because I'm a Chivening Scholar, there was a Nigerian Chivening Scholar who is also doing my course. He had arrived a week before me. So I used to talk to him, ask him how things are going, how is the place and all of that. So that was my very first friend. So when I arrived, he came to help me pack my stuff inside, help me with my bags and everything. And I had my quarantine 14 days, the longest ever. He was the one who brought me food, including the food that school gave me. And also I was always in my room. I got to meet my, my flatmates, but because I was quarantining, I had to like avoid every other person. I was mostly in my room and I was now sick. <laughs> I caught a flu when I arrived. I actually made a video about it. So if you haven't watched that video, you should do well to watch it. I caught that flu. I was so sick because of the cold. That 14 days that I arrived in UK were the most horrible days ever since I arrived. I couldn't breathe. I was always drinking hot tea, hot water, hot tea. I couldn't put anything cold in my mouth because my nose was going to block. Like, I don't want to re remember that experience because it was terrible. So that was like the first two weeks. My colleague usually just bring me food. He will come and stay with me until I was out of quarantine. And the thing is, I had I have very nice flatmates, and um, we are all ladies in my flat, so they are really cool. We are, we are all international students, so we got to know ourselves, and from there we became friends. So that was like the very first community I made my flatmates were like the very first community i made and they were nice they were kind and that's how we started being friends but because you know there's lockdown school was online everything was virtual so it was difficult meeting new people we only met people in class you know virtually hi yeah, my name is Kusama. i'm from nigeria and then they'll say the same thing every class you say the same thing you know the very first first classes you have to introduce yourself talk about what you do and all so well man the very f that first month it was i was trying to get used to the system what's going on how are things done and everything so when you first come it's going to be a bit difficult you have to you know develop thick skin otherwise you would easily be depressed i can tell you that when i first came i would uh, maybe maybe go downstairs or see somebody in the lips and i'll say good morning nobody will answer you it's that bad nobody will answer you it's not that easy to you know just start talking to somebody at random no they will not look at you and be like who is this one or where is this one coming from so that's how it is that first time or that first month is going to be a bit very difficult but the good thing it was that i i stayed i'm staying in a student accommodation and this my accommodation is full of international students so 
there's this thing about international students we want to get to know each other we want to explore we want to make friends we want to ex expand our network so that's how you start making friends one after another another thing that helped was that ever since my flatmates realized i'm from nigeria anybody at all they see that is african not even nigerian anybody at all they see that is african they say do you know couscous the person will say no he said oh she's my flatmates i want to introduce her to you They'll come and tell me, hey, Couscous, I met an African or I met a Nigerian. You need to meet the person I told the person about you. Before you know it, they will connect us. That person will now be my friend. And that person will also connect me to another Nigerian and we'll make friends. And before you know it, you go to their flat, you meet their flatmates, they become your friends. They come to your flat, they meet your flatmate, they become their friend. So it's, it was like that. That's how my our community started growing. Before you know it, I met lots of Nigerians here. Oh, we're even up to, we're more than 10 Nigerians here. So that's when we started, you know, building. It was a bit better. Got to know ourselves and then, you know, visiting each other's flatmates we were able to meet other flatmates as well people that are not from africa but they are their friends in their flats so that's how the community started i was growing and then when anybody has a birthday party will turn up <laughs> yes it was lockdown they locked us all of us inside the, the building so we decided to make use of the building you know that's how we spiced up our lives i'll cook i'll call people to come and eat come on, come and test nigerian food if i just meet you i get your number on whatsapp I, I get your instagram handle and if you are living here and i cook something nice oh would you like to t have a test of nigerian meal they say yes they'll come over if they'll try you too you have to go over try their own meal before you know it that's how you start building that friendship and that relationship but the thing is that majority of the time you are going to be alone because not every time that you would socialize not every time you'll be with people so you have to learn to be comfortable with your own you know in your own space you have to learn to be comfortable in your own company because you are going to be alone majority of the times well things might be different with you guys because Things are opening up, so that means you will probably be having classes on campus, maybe all your classes on campus. All my classes were virtual. So I wake up in the morning, I stay on my table, attend class, attend class, attend class. You go to the kitchen, you get food, come back, sit on your table, attend class. And then if you're tired or you're done with classes, you study or you go to bed, you sleep, you wake up the following day, you do the same thing. So it was difficult, but the thing is, for me, I was able to cope because I was already coping that way in Nigeria before I came. So I lived, I lived alone in Nigeria, and when the lock, when the COVID started, there was lockdown in March. I was always in my house. I worked from home from March to September. I worked from home. I lived alone, so I was already used to being alone staying in my room without being bored you know i'm a youtuber so if i'm not working i'm either shooting video i'm either editing video and so things used to occupy me if i'm not editing video i am listening to music if i'm not listening to music i'm watching a movie i would definitely occupy myself ah otherwise i will sleep seriously so you have to learn to be comfortable being alone otherwise you would easily fall into depression in fact, if you're such a person that you are not comfortable being alone for a long time, you don't have any business living alone, living in a private place. You have to book a student accommodation where you're going to see other students just like you. Because even people who are living in a student accommodation, sometimes you are not just in the mood to socialize. Sometimes others are not just in the mood, okay? And the thing is that when you are with people that are not nigerians or africans they are sometimes they, are, they don't have our vibes they are not that loud they are not that outgoing or talk they don't maybe they don't like talking too much so you if you have flatmates like that and you, you see them in the kitchen all they want to do is hello hi how's your day fine that's it they don't want to engage in conversations maybe long of conversations or sometimes they do but majority of the time some of them just want to be on their own they just oh hi how are you fine that's it so imagine all your flatmates are like that you have to learn how to be happy 
being alone so that's one thing i want you guys to know because coming here first of all it will be difficult but over time gradually things are going to change because you're going to be able to meet more people make more friends and socialize more so definitely that is how things are going to be so you have to just prepare mentally socially emotionally and ensure that no matter what i'm not going to be depressed because hmm, when you come here you hear a lot of mental issues or you get a lot of emails from your school saying oh if you're going through anything make sure you call the therapy out they will provide all the helplines available because it was difficult the school work that you're not understanding what's going on because you're from a different system that was safe day <laughs> the workload the assignments the 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 fact that you have to get new or used to the, the new environment and you are studying at the same time the fact that you don't know your way when you're going out you have to use the map every time and sometimes you are going to miss definitely you are going to miss your way you're going to miss your way you're going to miss the train you're going to go to the wrong location when you're supposed to go this way so you're trying to get used to the environment you're trying to study at the same time and you're trying to meet people and build relationships at the same time so that is going to be a bit difficult at first which is why you have to be mentally prepared for this you have to be mentally prepared if you must be happy in the uk or any other place that you're going to study other than your home country but one thing i have to say is that you have to you know make deliberate efforts to meet people okay you have to make deliberate efforts to make friends don't just sit in your corner and think that people will come and meet you no you have to be outgoing for instance if you are in a student accommodation talk to your flatmates ask them things about themselves oh where are you from what do you do like what were you doing before now what profession are you what course are you studying get to know them ask them stuff about their country okay and then when you meet people don't make it all about yourself oh my name is Simon from nigeria i love to do this nobody asks you <laughs> except they do actually <laughs> so but what what i noticed people love to talk about is when you ask them about their country especially if they are not from the uk oh where are you from oh i'm from guatemala oh my god how is there what's the weather like how are the people is it a big place <laughs> another thing i i really love to ask people after i ask them about their country and the weather it's as what's the population like and they'll be like oh we're about 40 million and i'm like oh where i'm from in nigeria we're over 200 million they'll be like oh that's a lot before you know you start conversations and when you guys are you know enjoying your company enjoying each other's conversations then that's a new friend you've added to your list okay so be very deliberate when you are uh, you know in your kitchen you meet your flatmates talk to them ask them stuff talk to them about oh how are classes you know because I lived in a student accommodation and most of us are international students we all went through the same trauma Oh, I'm not understanding my courses. Oh, I don't know what's going on yet. Oh, I don't have a hang of my, my courses yet. So you guys share those experiences. And, and when they're trying to tell you how they're feeling, try to understand with them. Try to give them words of encouragement. And before you know it, you start building that community. When you are invited for maybe a birthday party of a flatmate or a roommate or, a, you know, your course mate, make efforts to meet other people introduce yourself talk to them oh i'm from here oh just talk to people and be mindful of people who don't want to talk to you as well if you're trying to talk to someone and the person is like eh. also you don't have to talk to that particular person there are thousand and one other people who would like to talk to you so what i do is if i'm visiting like a, a my nigerian friend if i'm going to their flat maybe for a lunch or dinner i try to meet their flatmates i try to make friends you know speak to their flatmates establish relationship with their flatmates as well such that before you know it everybody in that flat knows me and that's just how it is and i noticed that people who live in private accommodation sometimes it's very difficult to make friends because you may end up living with neighbors who do not care about you you may end up living with people who they don't care about you actually they are busy people and they are not students they are not international students so they don't really know what you're going through they don't really know how things are for you they don't really understand that you don't know you don't understand the system and you need someone to show you around so sometimes 
you just try to get out of your comfort zone make friends i think another way i made friends was during virtual classes there are some times that the lecturer will just say oh you guys you know chat among yourself get to know each other and then you see us dropping our social media handles in the comment section and we are following each other once i follow the person i'll try to send a hi or hello on the in the dm so that i the person gets to know who i am and then before you know it i start replying to their status and you become friends basically <laughs> that's just how things are i think another thing that also helped me was because i'm a chibling scholar so before we even arrived in uk we already had different groups chibling nigerian group chibling queen mary group chibling london group you know things like that so we had lots of groups like that so we're always chatting online always chatting online so we already like establish that relationship virtually such that when the lockdown was a bit eased we could easily go out and meet people and they, you feel like you've already met these people so that's just how it is i am not guaranteeing you that it's going to be easy because it's not going to be easy but you're going to have to make the effort because if you don't make the effort you are basically going to stay here and one year will pass you if you're a postgraduate student one year will pass and you find out that you don't have friends I've met a lot of people and a lot of professionals who during career events or even social events, you ask them, what do you regret or what would you have done better when you were here? And most of them always keep saying, I wish I had networked more when I was here. Oh, I wish I had met more friends. Oh, and I wish I had net. It's always that word network. I wish I had networked more. I wish I had gone out more to meet people. I wish I had met more people. That's what people always talk about too. So you don't want to be in that shoes because if you're not deliberate about it, you're not going to meet people. Another part of the question was if I've ever experienced racism. Basically, I wouldn't say I've really experienced like outrightly, but there are subtle racisms here and there. There are passive aggressions here and there. But before I came I already, you know, had in mind that this happens and I decided that no matter how it is, sometimes it gets to you, obviously, you can just enter the bus and then is that the person doesn't want to sit near you or the person changes seats you get that kind of thing you can go to the supermarket and you're trying to shop on the same line with the person and then the person leaves that aisle and goes to the next aisle you don't know if the person is doing it because of your skin color or sometimes it is because of that what other ways have i experienced it yeah i've gone to the first time i went to class i went to class it was the very first time you know during covid and it was socially there was social distancing i noticed that this particular girl was talking to every other person but me <laughs> i tried talking to every other person but i noticed that she wasn't just trying to get close to me she was trying to stay away from me me too i stay away from you now waiting to happen is it my first to talk to you so those passive aggressions and subtle acts of racism are just there you have to be careful and sometimes when you're already aware that these things are there it doesn't matter it doesn't matter me i don't care you want to come and chase me show me i'm an international student they're not pay fees they don't pay double to come and stay here am i being here for free am i your, am i a burden to you am i coming to beg you for money no if all of these things are no then i don't i don't see why your actions should really bother me like that but a couple of my colleagues have experienced outright acts of racism outright acts of you know things like that and sometimes you may apply for a job and by the time you see where you are from they don't want to give you other times you may just enter maybe you're walking on the road and somebody starts saying hey you nigger things like that my people me i don't even have energy to be upset because why would i be upset at a stranger when you are not paying my bills i don't really care but just be rest assured that it is there it's not everybody no it's not it's not a lot of people that do it people that do it i just feel like they are crazy because this is 2021 and you shouldn't be acting like somebody with a, a different skin color than yours you that you are better than that person because it's very very archaic and very you know how would you in 2021 be, be doing all of those things i just feel like you're so low if you do those things so that's it my people that's how i was able to deal another thing is basically i am very comfortable being in my space being alone i can stay in my room for a week and i don't go out and i don't feel like anything is wrong with it i don't even like to go out to shop a lot so most of the time i am alone but if you are not the kind of person that like to be alone 
you need to make conscious effort to go out there meet people socialize and build friendships so basically that is it another thing is that your colleagues in class if you're offering a course with them they can decide to set up a whatsapp group join those groups interact in those groups let them know you get to know you let them know your name and that's how you build that community around you and if you're studying you don't understand don't be afraid to ask your colleague man there were times when you ask yourself what am i doing here like who sent me because those those days are just there then winter blues the weather will be so cold and you'll be asking yourself who sent me god those times are there but when those times come just know that they are just for a moment they are not going to last for long so just console yourself do what makes you happy if playing music makes you happy do that if watching a movie makes you happy do that if cooking eating makes you happy just do that anything that will take you out of that mood because i have been there a lot of times and i know how it is you feel so terrible about yourself you feel like why am i even here why am i even you know you will just be so upset winter blues when the weather when it gets dark by 4 p.m and you're like ah there were times that if i'm awake at night and i just sleep off maybe i sleep in the morning by the time you wake up it's dark again and you'll be so frustrated you don't even see daybreak because i'm like what, what is all this so it was always very annoying but then all the same we are here we are happy that this is summer we are happy we love summer that's why we are going to the streets every time because we don't have summer every time the weather is now good you see guys it was the weather is another thing that will cause you depression it is terrible it is cold but when you're going out you have to double you know pack yourself dress properly and ensure that you will not be cold immediately when you go at least let stay for at least three four hours out there before you start feeling good that's why you have to dress properly so uh, another thing that caused people really you know depression was the workload the academic work for masters in uk is really really demanding it's very hectic and if you are not strong you will break down those days will come but when you break down just give it give yourself time you get back to yourself but by all means stay happy be a happy person get to know people let people get to know you if your name another thing i i do that i made me have lots of friends is that when i tell when the people ask me for my what's your name and i say oh my name is kuseme and and it seems like they're finding it very difficult to pronounce i quickly say but you can call me couscous couscous is a recipe is is a meal so a lot of people know couscous there's couscous everywhere so once i say couscous and they say just like the meal i say yes you got that right my name sticks before you know it you know my name once i say couscous it sticks so if you have a nickname that you know that people it can stick faster than your normal name why not otherwise you can teach them how to pronounce your name and that's fine i hope i've been able to answer your question opinion and i've tried i went out i started shooting this video earlier in the day and i went out so i i discarded that version and i came back this is past 11 midnight that i'm making this video because i just had to do it it was urgent and it was from one of the favorite followers of this channel so i decided to do this video by all means i just hope that it's still recording because i also have low battery these are the things we go through guys <laughs> do well to like this video do well to subscribe do well to share this video if you know that it's going to help anybody that's going to come to school this period you know i'm going to share more tips that will help you guys in coping with the environment and getting used to the system of course i'm definitely going to share more tips if you have any questions drop it in the comment section if you have any video suggestion do drop it as well and i would do well to do uh, you know make a video and answer your questions thank you so much for staying tuned to the end do well to like share subscribe i'll catch you in my next video bye